Hey guys, so I'm here at the location of Lee Sun Gyun's final resting spot. If you see the other video, I actually go to the actual parking lot that he was discovered in where there's still some remnants of a memorial. But it was such a depressing atmosphere over there that I wanted to hopefully show you what he may have seen as some of his last images of this earth before he departed. And it is a nice view of Seoul, a peaceful view. The vibe here is actually more of a cemetery than a park. It has a very quiet, almost empty, you know, feeling, but with kind of like something circulating in the atmosphere and strange noises coming from an awning that shouldn't be making noises. But I wanted to give you an update on the case of, of the blackmailers and what we know so far. So the first trial for the blackmailers and particularly the, they're calling her now a former actress, Miss Park, the upstairs neighbor, the one that was the main blackmailer she had gone to her first trial and she brought her baby again. It was crying and screaming in the courtroom. The judge asked, are you always going to bring your baby? Don't you have any childcare? And she's like, I'm going to bring my baby each time. So that was like, uh, but in general with these court hearings and cases, not a lot happens at each one. And the game is to try to extend it like, to the next court hearing to delay as much as possible. And the way they do that is essentially they sl the, it, the accused slows down the process of what they're supposed to respond with. Like basically whatever homework they're supposed to do, they kind of delay it and delay it until the last minute. And then the other side, so in this case the prosecution, needs more time and so it just gets Extended. However, in like a high-profile criminal case like this, things could uh, get sped up. But not a lot happened out of that first first trial. So it's the first trial. Like, so it's not like they had an they haven't appealed yet. But within the first trial, there's like the guideposts of like when the judge checks in on the case. But what we do have as more updates is a report by the prosecution because now the prosecution is handling this case after the police have done their investigation and they say like, yep, this is criminal. Now it's time for the prosecutors to go to the court, to the judge, to try to get an applicable punishment under whatever laws and categories uh, there are. And in the whole legal world, you'll always find like, okay, that's kind of weird. Like that's what they're, uh, able to hone in on because that's like what the law is applicable to. So in this case, there's like a telecommunications law because she bought some illegal SIM cards to facilitate the hacking. She being Miss Park, the former actress, the one with the baby, the one that lived upstairs, and the fact that she drove to uh, Busan and then got arrested that also violates some like uh, traffic or like, you know, moving while you're like, uh, uh, you know, under criminal, doing criminality. So they're finding ways that the laws can stick well in the atmosphere of a court. But we're talking about now the court of public opinion and also some of the specifics of how this operation was being conducted in terms of a blackmail case against Lee Sun Gyun. So we have more confirmation about how this criminality started because there was a question of like, who is the actual blackmailer? Was it the madame that was doing these things with Lee Sun Gyun or was it the girl upstairs? Long story short, it eventually became both of them. But the reason why it was confusing in the beginning was in the beginning, it was actually the girl upstairs. Now, this is how it all came about. So 
in 2017, Kim, Mrs. We'll call Miss Kim. She's the madam. We'll call her Madam Kim, and we'll call the girl upstairs Miss Actress, Miss Park, the actress. And so these two met in 2017 in jail. And as we've gone through before, they became friends and a bit fast friends because they could relate to each other because uh, after going to jail and coming out of jail, there's like, you know, not a lot of people who are probably in your social group. And so then in 2022 in September, they started living in the same apartment complex. And by doing so, they got really close. Remember how they were calling each other sisters? They're not real blood sisters, but and it's more like, hey, sister, it's not like that. They were calling, you know, Ani, a Tongseng. And even the girl upstairs, Miss Park, the actress, called Madam Kim's mom, mom. Not like Omonim, it's like Omma, which. I mean, come on, that's a little bit scam artisty, but she was, we heard all of the voice recordings where she was doing that. So they got close. And of course, when you're working in any job, but especially probably in this type of job where you a madam and you like in the 1% madam hoish kind of situation and you are entertaining celebrities. And not only that, are you, uh, allegedly using substances with celebrities, she would talk to the girl upstairs and just kind of spill and vent. But that's why Mrs. Park, the actress, the former actress, but she had like two bit roles, but you know, she's kind of like an actress still. She learned a lot of the private information about Madam Kim's goings and dealings. Eventually the girl upstairs, I believe also worked you know, a little bit at that same uh, hostess bar. But she found out a lot of details. That's why she knew a lot about what was going on. And prosecutors are saying that what triggered Miss Park to have like this idea for a major blackmail operation was that Madam Kim had confessed or not confessed just basically kind of said to her friend hey you know what like there's this all the celebrity stuff and one of my co-workers has threatened threatened me so one of the co-workers of madam kim threatened her saying like i'm going to expose all of you all and so madam kim gave that co-worker ten thousand dollars uh, exchange rate of course less than ten thousand dollars but ten million won which is about ten thousand dollars to shut his mouth and that's where people are saying Ms. Park's criminality instinct, just kind of like that temptation, got sparked. Where she really was like, hmm, this is an opportunity. If my friend, my sister, is willing to pay $10,000 to a coworker to shut his mouth, how much can I get out of my sister downstairs? And so apparently now that they, they have evidence of the actress Miss Park upstairs buying three illegal SIM cards for about $300 each under the name of the uh, place that they worked. And so she was using kind of like a, a burner phone that I guess wouldn't be able to be traced. And she started to send telegram message threats to her own sister downstairs. Yeah, she probably sent in the threats and then uh, the, her sister, the madam, Kim downstairs is probably calling the girl upstairs be like, oh my God, I, like, I don't know what to do. I'm getting like threatened, which basically happened. Your own sister. So the initial message said like, oh, there's a, you have tons of sh stuff on your phone, don't you? The blackmail message to Madam Kim said like, oh, you have tons of, of, of compromising videos and pictures and information I know you do on your phone and it's gonna flip the entire country of Korea around if people found out what was on your phone. So if you don't want that information to be released to the mass media, then you gotta come up with $100,000 or but you know, 100 million won and if you don't, 
then I, it didn't say what the specified time period was, but that the amount would go up $10,000 each period you don't pay up. So that got Madam Kim all kind of flustered and she's just saying like, oh dang, I gotta come up with $100,000. And then so she contacted uh, Lee Sun Yoon to tell him about it. But then this is where it gets juicy and saucy. Madam Kim's criminal instinct, right? Because they both, they both jailbirds. Madam Kim's criminal instinct also kicked in and said like, hey, hmm, if I'm being threatened for a hundred million won, why don't I ask Lee Sun Gyun for 300 million won, like $300,000, I'll keep $200,000 and then pay the blackmailer a hundred thousand dollars and boom. So in when she made that choice, then she became also part of this blackmailing thing. Now at this point, Madam Kim, the girl downstairs, did not know that the girl upstairs, her sister, Miss Park, the former actress, was the one on Telegram threatening her. And it seemed like, to a certain extent, very late in the game, she still didn't know. Now, so what Lee Sun Yoon did was pay the madam $300,000. And so the madam was supposed to give $100,000 to this mysterious telegram blackmailer. But what ended up happening is she's just like, maybe I don't even need to pay this blackmailer. I'm just going to keep all $300,000. And so that is when things started to, that was a very foolish choice for the madam because then that pissed off the girl upstairs and she was scheming all sorts of ways to try to get that money from Madam Kim downstairs. And remember how it just kind of didn't make sense. So the girl upstairs was spinning stories saying like, oh, you know, the blackmailer is uh, attacking me now. The blackmailer is coming to me now. The blackmailer wants me to show up at the money transfer point. The blackmailer is saying that, she, that, that Madam Kim has to pay up, even though it's her. Like she's behind the whole thing. She's doing like this double identity thing. So then what happened, the thing that, how did Lee Sun Yoon get tipped off is that the girl upstairs is just pissed off now. She's just like, damn, okay. The girl downstairs, she got her $300,000. She didn't share any of it. The girl upstairs said, okay, fine. I'm gonna talk to Lee Sun Yoon directly. And this is when she contacted Lee Sun Yoon directly and said like, you have to pay up a hundred million won. Now, Lee Sun Gyun is saying like, wait a minute, I just paid 300,000 won, uh, 300, dollars, 300 million won, Tamo. What is going on? How come it didn't get transferred to this blackmail? Why are you coming at, you know, saying like you didn't get paid? And so I think that's when he started to put two and two together and realized he was getting scammed by his own madam in this situation. So did Lee Sun Yoon pay more money? Actually, he did. He did say, apparently through his channel, saying like, okay, I don't have $100,000 or 100 million won free floating, but I can give you 50 million won or about $50,000. And so that is where we have that photographic evidence of the girl upstairs going into a fancy Gangnam restaurant where she got the exchange. She basically got her 50 million won. And that is then how the reported total amount of 350 million won in this hostage ransom kind of situ blackmail situation uh, got tabulated and now clarified. So he paid the 50 million won and then, then that was it. And then he, you know, he was filing, he, he really put two and two together and then he filed that police report asking for an investigation into both of these girls saying that he was being blackmailed. 
But remember at the time, the police were not, they were just like blackmail. I don't know. Like, you know, we're focusing on this whole drug thing. Like, you know, like we're, we're going to try to nab you on this whole substances thing and the scandal and the celebrity and all this kind of stuff. So that is how that those two worlds collided, the greed of both of these girls who eventually turned on each other. But the girl upstairs, I mean, she was the one with the biggest, you know, musical number. I mean, she started singing and dancing and doing her pirouettes from the beginning through three illegal SIM cards posing as a hacker, sending threatening messages to her own sister downstairs, threatening her for money and then the girl downstairs madam kim had her own greed pop up and said like okay i got the black male money mine okay, i'm sharing it with anybody so that's where the situation is with both of these girls and that has been revealed and in this kind of situation with like the whole prosecution court case the sim card goes under like telecommunications law and of course the bribery you can trace towards money so that makes it a much uh, stronger case for the prosecution to sink their teeth in because that is more pure evidence that also ties directly into laws that can be punishable however because it's sort of you're kind of ex you're kind of like trying to do mixy matchy with the was the actual what happened and fix it to some sort of law i'm not very hopeful that they're going to get like a big sentence because they're going to be proven guilty of what this kind of like bribery or telecommunications misuse uh those kind of things and really there's no price on if he had ended his own life even though like they led him to that point like it's not it's not it's not, it's not like a cut and dry murder case so that's the kind of sad part about this situation but at least it looks like they're not going to be like there's so much attention on this they're not going to be given that much of a grace i think however it all depends on like what the punishment for each of those kind of obscure laws are and if it and if it doesn't add up to much because punishments are usually a lot you know much lower than you would think here in korea then it might feel at the end of this that justice has not been served so that's the latest update with what we have found out now in a responsible manner of this case according to the prosecution's report and the initial announcements of what happened at the first hearing of the trial against the blackmailers who really pushed Lee sung Yoon into a corner but of course as everybody's saying it wasn't just them a lot of people were complicit in this tragedy and so hopefully we will see more good news come out and I'll keep you updated so this is Waryong Kongwon, Waryong Park, the site of Lee Sun Yoon's last moments on Earth. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.